Alright, it's, uh, it's good to be here in Essex. Uh, it's the first time I've had a gig in Essex, but my dad was born and raised here, uh, but he managed to get out to make a better life for his family, uh, so that was good. And, uh, and But even now though, even now, when I watch The Only Way is Essex, I think, there but for the grace of God. So, uh, yeah, no, it is good to be here. I've been doing stand-up for about a year now, and just to give you all an idea of just how well it's been going for me, right? I, uh, I was walking through Cardiff the other day where I live and there were two teenage boys walking the other way. One of them nudges his mate, points over at me, says, look, over there. It's the bloke who works in Specsavers. <laughs> Which is good, isn't it? It's nice to finally get a bit of recognition. That's lovely. And, uh, and it's true, right? I do, I do work in Specsavers. And I said to my boss the other day, I'm thinking about getting contact lenses. He said, all right, take your glasses off. And I did. He said, no, it doesn't suit you. <laughs> Think about that for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. My own unadorned face <laughs> doesn't suit me. <laughs> what chance have I got, right? And we get some quite angry customers in, in the Specsavers. We had this guy came in the other day, he kind of stormed up to the desk. I said, hello. He said, I wish this was a hello. Which is brilliant, isn't it? Because uh, one of two things has happened there. Either he's fundamentally misunderstood the nature of the word hello, or he's had his angry rant planned out beforehand. He's been quite heavily dependent on someone saying good afternoon. <laughs> and he's lacked either the wit or the intellect to improvise within the moment. Now this is always the bit in my set where I worry someone might heckle, thereby proving that I also lack the wit and the intellect to improvise within the moment. So let's move swiftly on. Uh, gay people. I don't mind gay men, but I wouldn't let my sister marry one. Some of you go in with that, some of you not so much. And, and if you think that's a shit joke, fair enough. But if you're worried there might be some sort of undercurrent of homophobia to that, right? Don't worry, I can't actually be a homophobe because one of my best friends is gay. <laughs> believe that's, that's still the rule, isn't it, sir? Believe that's, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna take that non-committal shrug as a sort of affirmation, that's nice, good. Yeah, so I can say what I like, yeah. Uh, one of my, it's true, one of my best friends is gay. I mean, I didn't know he was gay when I met him. <laughs> Obviously. I would never deliberately befriend a gay. <laughs> but what happened was he spent the best part of 24 years being like a good and loyal friend who was there for me when I needed someone, fun to hang around with, similar taste in film and music, just, just generally a nice guy, supportive, great guy. And then he told me. Because they're sneaky like that, the gays. <laughs> It's true, no, he actually, one of my friends is gay. He actually came out to me in a gay bar that was holding a fundraiser for the gay football team that he plays for. So the signs were there, if I'm being honest with you, Chamsford. The signs were there. Um, and he was a bit worried, he was a bit worried how I might react, you know, he told me, I just gave him a big hug and I said, he's still the same guy to me. And then me and him and all his gay footballing friends went up onto the dance floor for a bit of a dance, you know, we went up for a bit of a dance together. One of his gay friends in particular starts dancing up quite closely with me. Right, I don't mind that, you know, I'll have a bit of a dance with anyone, you know, cause, cause this is how I dance. <laughs> I, I don't get asked very often, right? <laughs> So I'll, I'll have a dance with anyone, that's fine. But then this same guy starts trying to slip his hand down the front of my trousers. And I'll be honest with you, Chelmsford, I wasn't okay with that. <laughs> but at the same time, I kind of felt, well, this is their venue. <laughs> I don't like to make a fuss. <laughs> you know, I had to say something, right? I had to say something. So I just said to him, look, the thing is, I'm crap at sex. You wouldn't enjoy it. I mean, I was as surprised as you all are, clearly, that he fell for such an obvious lie.
Yeah, cheers. Uh, so, yeah, something you should know about me, um, I'm quite a moral guy, I'm quite moral. I think I got that, I think I got that from my granddad, because he used to take us out shooting, right? He used to take us out shooting, uh, but he used to believe that it's wrong, and morally wrong, to shoot something purely for sport. So when we got home, he used to make us eat the clay pigeons. <laughs> but, you know, morality is a funny thing, you know, because, like, for example, on the one hand, I think it's, I think prostitution is wrong, you know, I think it's wrong to pay women for sexual favours, I think that's morally wrong. But on the other hand, I will pretend to have found a lump in order to get a nurse to fill my balls for a couple of minutes, so... <laughs> is that wrong? We have, we have no way of knowing. We have no way of knowing. I mean, if only we could ask the nurses, but we can't, can we? They would, they would grow suspicious. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I went home. I went home at Christmas and, uh... Woo! Yeah! Yeah, no, I went home at Christmas and I saw my family. I saw my little sister, Katie, and, uh... <laughs> yeah! Woo! Woo! Yeah, no, sorry. I went home at Christmas and, uh, I saw my little sister, Katie, and she, we got talking and, uh... Yeah, no, sorry, it's just this is quite nice wine. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm glad to be up here in front of you all, but I'm not going to let it interrupt my evening, so... <laughs> yeah, so I went home for Christmas and I saw my little sister Katie and she'd been to Portugal recently, she'd been swimming with dolphins, right? And she had this DVD of her swimming with dolphins that she was adamant that I should watch with her. And, I mean, I've seen my sister swim, I've seen dolphins. Not that fussed about combining. If she had a video of herself, she had a video of herself quad biking with dolphins. <laughs> but I would watch that. Or, or like if she'd if she'd been swimming with Stephen Hawking. Right, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not saying she should. Right. I'm not saying she should do that. That's no way to treat an eminent wheelchair bound professor. But if she did have that video. I'd be curious. <laughs> right, but her and dolphins, I said, no, I don't want to watch that. And, and she said, well, uh, she said, but it's my dream. Don't you want to see me fulfill my dream? No. <laughs> and, I, and you might think I'm being hypocritical. I'm not, I'm not being hypocritical, right? I'm not gonna trouble you with the contents of my wildest dreams, but I'll tell you now, if I ever get to achieve them, I'm not going to make my family watch. <laughs> you know, to be honest, they probably shouldn't find out about most of them. It probably shouldn't be filmed for legal reasons. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah, that's that about wraps it up for me, I think. You know, you've still got one more great actor see, so I'm going to get out of your way. But uh, before I do, I'd just like to say, you know, you've been a lovely audience, because you do get some tough crowds sometimes with the comedy. Um, but you've been, no, really a lovely, uh, sort of intelligent, um, accepting, sort of clever, attractive, sexy audience. The sort of intelligent, attractive, sexy, beautiful audience who is unafraid to find yourselves being massively patronised by a specky short ass on a school night. So, uh, well done you. Keep up the good work. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Chris Chopping!